Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Process Technology Part 1, Module 39. We were uh, talking about how um, you can uh, express FC, the cutting force in terms of the shear force and ultimate yield shear stress, uh, strength of the material that you are cutting. And in context of that, we wanted to do some uh, optimization for the total amount of power requirement that would be used for cutting processes. <coughs> so, we basically tried to map FC, the cutting force, in terms of uh, the shear force Fs, cos of lambda minus alpha divided by cos of phi plus lambda minus alpha in the last module. And <coughs> we further uh, expressed this Fs uh, from an earlier equation as uh, a function of the material properties and also the total cutting area by W T 1 tau s sin divided by sin phi, where tau s is the ultimate uh, shear yield strength of the material and W T 1 by sin phi was the total interfacial area between the chip in the cutting zone and the workpiece from which it would otherwise get separated. So, if we <coughs> uh, substitute the value of F s from equation, uh, let us say 11, which we had done earlier all the way to equation 12, F c comes out to be equal to W t 1 tau s cos of lambda minus alpha divided by sin of phi cos of phi plus lambda minus alpha. And uh, the power consumption which is otherwise taken as the force velocity product that means the cutting force times the velocity, the feed velocity uh, or cutting velocity. So, that that is basically the power that is consumed in the uh, separation of the, uh, the chip. So, basically uh, the power consumption during machining is given by W equal to F c times of velocity v that is the cutting force times the velocity of the cut and this comes out to be equal to v w t 1 tau s cos of lambda minus alpha times of 1 divided by sin phi cos of phi plus lambda minus alpha. <coughs> so, as nature always tries to take the path of least resistance. During a cutting operation, phi would take a value such that the least amount of energy be consumed per unit time. Consumed or W is <coughs> minimum, W being the total amount of work done in order to do the chipping process successfully, which is minimum. So, as V small w width of the cutting zone, uncut chip thickness T 1 and alpha are fixed quantities for a certain machine given machine operation machining operation. If we assume that tau s and lambda are also time invariant. So, this is something that we are just uh, assuming, although in the real case uh, the friction coefficient as well as 
the uh, ultimate yield strength of the material in shear would typically vary as a function of temperature rise or temperature increase. So, we are not considering that here in this and we are considering this to be time invariant property and as such related to the property of the material. Then you can say that W is only a function that is the total amount of work done uh, per unit time or total amount of power that is consumed W is only a function of phi. So, W actually is function of phi. So, therefore, we can also say that this is equal to some constant here which is related to all these different parameters V, W, T 1, alpha. Uh, you have cos lambda minus alpha. So, even lambda and T s divided by the term sin of phi cos of phi plus lambda minus alpha. And we assume that minimum power would be consumed only <coughs> corresponding to a certain orientation of phi. So, basically we have to minimize this number here the total amount of power or work done per unit time uh, with respect to phi okay, and see at what phi values this uh, power consumption would be minimum or uh, it would again you know the angle would formulate in a way as if the cutting action is happening through the least path of resistance being offered to the tool surface which is otherwise a scraping through the, uh, the material to remove it. So, <coughs> W phi will be minimum when the denominator is maximum which can also be obtained by differentiating this with respect to phi and putting equal to 0. So, we have again cos phi cos of phi plus lambda alpha minus of sin phi sin of phi plus lambda minus alpha equal to 0 or cos of 2 phi plus lambda minus alpha equal to 0 which can only happen when 2 phi plus lambda minus alpha is pi by 2. Okay. And so, this is the kind of condition uh, also obviously lambda is as you know tan inverse of mu we are assuming mu to be constant invariant with time. So, that is the optimum machining criteria. And uh, definitely the phi would take a value which would be dependent on this particular relationship corresponding to the minimum power consumption. Therefore, the equation two phi plus lambda minus alpha equals pi by 2 provides a way to determine the shear angle corresponding to a certain value of alpha. and friction angle lambda. So, uh, we have a sort of optimization criteria here. So, the value of uh, F c can be evaluated corresponding to this condition of 2 phi plus lambda minus alpha equal to pi by 2. So, the F c was recorded as W t 1 tau s cos of lambda minus alpha divided by sin of phi cos of phi plus lambda minus alpha. So, if I put the value of uh, phi plus lambda minus alpha uh, from the relationship obtained earlier, it can be uh, obtained as pi by 2 minus phi 2 phi plus lambda minus alpha was pi by 2 by the relationship. So, I substitute this value here and try to see what happens to this equation. So, this becomes equal to w uh, width of the cutting zone times thickness uncut thickness tau s shear stress cos of lambda minus alpha divided by sin of phi cos of pi by 2 minus phi. In other words, <coughs> this can be represented as sin square phi and sin square phi 
uh, if I just substitute you know if I just uh, multiply numerator and denominator by 2 can also be written as 2 w t 1 t s tau s cos of lambda minus alpha divided by 1 minus cos of 2 phi. Okay. So, <coughs> cos of 2 phi obviously is nothing but again if I look at this particular equation can be uh, pi by 2 minus lambda uh, minus alpha brackets. Okay. So, we just substitute that again and try to see what happens or what form the equation would take. This is twice w t 1 tau s cos lambda minus alpha divided by 1 minus of sin uh, lambda minus alpha. Obviously, cos of pi by 2 minus lambda minus alpha would be sin of lambda minus alpha. So, this is ultimately the form which comes out from for the f c value on this particular optimum criteria corresponding to the value of phi that has been recorded using this power minimization criteria. And uh, merchant found out that this theory yields quite agreeable results when cutting synthetic plastics, but agrees poorly with the results of machining metals. So, there was a small modification done by P W Bridgman, who realized that uh, the shear stress ultimate shear stress tau s is not completely independent of the normal stress uh, sigma, which would come into picture. In fact, what uh, alternate theory he proposed was that can be relate the tau s to a basic tau s 0 value plus something proportional to the normal the, <coughs> the normal stress sigma that is coming at the shear plane, okay, where k 1 is a constant and sigma is the normal stress acting on the shear plane. Let us just write this down k 1 is a constant and sigma is the, the, the normal stress acting on the shear plane. So, if I just substitute this value here. Uh, for the tau s value, there will be some modifications which would happen to the uh, to the overall you know uh, equation. And if we look at what those modifications are, so we we know that the uh, if we just uh, sort of consider what is the normal stress. So the normal stress actually is nothing but the normal reaction uh, which is given by the work piece on the metal per unit area. Okay. And uh, actually it is the, uh, the sign component of the angle phi uh, of the normal force. And I will just like to redraw what I did before, just to explain this concept here. Let us say this is the chipping uh, formulation or this is the chipping formation process which is happening. And uh, this is the tool which is at certain rake angle alpha with respect to the perpendicular direction. And further as I think I had illustrated earlier, we have a shear force acting in this direction f s. There is a normal force which acts in a perpendicular direction, which uh, is given by uh, this vector right here. This is the normal force. So, this one is f n and this results in some kind of a resultant which is here somewhere here and we can say this is r just wanting to sort of repeat what we did uh, in terms of the force diagrams. Also we had uh, two more forces that is the uh, frictional force to the chip as offered by the tool rake phase and the normal reaction which again was offered by the rake phase we call them f and n and obviously there would be a third cutting and tangential force which would be offered by uh, the 
work piece on to the tool surface, because uh, the tool is having a ploughing motion into the work piece. Okay. So, having said that, obviously, the normal force on the shear plane, due to which the normal stress would probably come up, is because of this F n value right here. And the area of the zone, I think, which we had done earlier, was actually W T 1 by sin phi. So, uh, that is also, because uh, the total amount of cut, uncut chip thickness is T 1, and the angle uh, across which this uh, thickness needs to be uh, translated in order to get to the shear plane is phi. So, therefore, T 1 by sin phi is what the length of this hypotenuse would be in this triangle, and W is the width of the cutting zone coming out of the paper or out of the board okay, or going inside. So, this W T 1 by sin pi would be the total area of this particular phase on which force F n is acting. So, this is going to be the sigma value or the normal stress on the shear zone. And uh, further, if I wanted to put this value in the suggested modification of Bridgman, the final shear stress would come out to be equal to two components. One is tau is 0, and another is some constant k 1 times of this sigma value, which again is F n sin phi divided by W t 1. So, there is actually a sin phi based variation in the uh, total shear stress, which is because there is a component of the uh, normal stress on the shear plane acting in order to define what is the ultimate shear yield stress of uh, shear yield strength of the material at the zone of cut or zone of chip formation. So, we already uh, know that uh, we have a correlation between F s and F n. And so, F s by F n was earlier recorded to be equal to tan of phi plus lambda minus alpha. If you remember the values that we uh, talked about. So, the uh, value here uh, of if you, if you look at F n by F s is really how to resolve it as components here in this particular figure. So, we have this angle equal to phi if you may realize from earlier statements this was the angle lambda and the way we look at this angle was lambda minus alpha. which we had done in earlier calculations. This angle right here was actually alpha and the angle taken here uh, in this particular area was phi. So, obviously, the total amount of angle between the F t and F s in this right triangle would be phi plus lambda minus alpha. This right here is phi. So, phi plus lambda minus alpha. So, this is the total angle of the force triangle corresponding to the, uh, the normal force in the shear plane and the uh, shear force. Let me just separate this out here. This is F s, uh, this is F n and the angular relationship between these two. Therefore, the resultant of these two forces is at an angle of phi plus lambda minus alpha. So, obviously, F n by F s in this particular case becomes tan of uh, phi plus lambda minus alpha and uh, having said that, uh, if we wanted to now substitute the F n value in terms of F s in this equation, we would have the F n equals to F s tan of phi plus lambda minus alpha and correspondingly tau s as tau s 0 plus k 1 times of F s tan of phi plus lambda minus alpha divided by W t 1 by sin of phi. Further, uh, I can actually have now uh, the from this whole equation, the value of tau s 0, which comes out to be F s divided by W t 1 by sin phi times of 1 minus k 1 tan of phi plus lambda minus alpha. The reason being that you have on one side tau s value, which you can write down simply from the earlier equation as F s divided by W t 1 by sin phi. So, if you substitute this value in tau s, 
the tau s is 0 value from this substitution comes out to be f s by w t 1 by sin phi times of 1 minus k 1 tan phi plus lambda minus alpha. Or in other words, f s can be recorded as w t 1 tau s naught divided by this whole term right about here, which is sin of phi times of 1 minus k 1 tan of phi plus lambda minus alpha or in other words, you can write this down as again, you know if I just uh, open this up as a sign by cos ratio. So, I should be able to write it as w t 1 tau s naught times of cos of phi plus lambda minus alpha divided by sin of phi times of cos of phi plus lambda minus alpha minus k 1 sin of phi plus lambda minus alpha. Okay. So, having said that, uh, we have now a relationship where we can again use the same logic underlying logic of um, uh, trying to find out the cutting force and trying to do the force velocity product and minimize the force velocity product to obtain a final solution, which could be a slightly different than the solution that was obtained earlier, which did not consider the assumption of the, uh, the normal force. So, this brings us to the end of this module uh, 39 and in the next module we will do this force velocity product optimization and try to find out the new angle phi. Thank you.